Alrighty boys, Paul here with you today. Figured I'd save some of your heartache and um, talk about what do you need to do a wheel bearing on the side of the road. All the tools you're going to need to do a wheel bearing. So hopefully this video helps. It's probably the most, it's not going to be the most popular video, but if you're out there and you're side on stuck the road and you're trying to figure out what you're going to need, here you go. Thank me later. So as you can tell, I got a bad bearing in here already. So here's the symptoms of a bearing, you know what I mean? These trucks are fairly intelligent. Well, the ABS sensor is your speed sensor on it. So it throws a check engine light, throws an ABS light, throws a traction control light. And drivers usually call and be like, hey, I got an ABS light and a traction. And sometimes, uh, most most time there's no check engine if it's not too bad. If it's really bad and he's driven long enough or whatever the case is, it triggers the check engine. But ABS, traction, and uh, brake light, you know, it's, it's a bearing. So the tools you're going to need... Also, why don't I keep this, keep this in mind? Depending how bad it is, always have a fresh pair of pads with you and a rotor. Uh, my rotor's in here. The rotor's in here, a nice new rotor. Mine wasn't bad, so we left it alone. Uh, so anyways, with that in mind, what are you going to need? I'm going to go down the list real quick. Hopefully this wind isn't ruining my ear or my audio. So... Depending how bad it is, I would advise everyone just to keep it simple. Pop the center cap on your axle. Shoot, what am I talking about? Not axle. If you have stock wheels, you're going to have a little center cap right here. Pop it off, and you're going to have your... Well, this is on the front. Uh, it's for y'all nitpicking people. So the front wheel, right? You're going to have a stock rim. You're going to have a cap here. So pop it off, and you're going to have access to your uh, axle nut. Spray out some anti-seize and go to town while the vehicle's on the ground so you don't have to fight it. So you break that loose, leave it alone. Break, of course we got my kiddos. Break the lug nuts loose and go to town. Pick up your jack. Also, keep in mind, my jack has a two-piece handle. That piece gets used as a cheater bar. If you don't have a cheater bar, keep that in mind. You need one. Anyways, get your truck off the ground. I use this for, uh, just to speed things up. And, you know, I go to town, pull the nut off pull the lug nuts off then you get oh by the way the, it's a 22 millimeter on the nuts uh, the wheel nuts and 33 millimeter on the axle duct then you're gonna need a 24 millimeter pull the bracket of the caliper not the caliper pins or those little dinky bolts the fat old bolts that hold the whole thing to the to the frame you know it's the caliper frame is what I would call it, or the caliper bracket. What the caliper sits in, there's going to be two fat bolts, 24 millimeter, that's what you need. Um, in some cases, you could uh, get creative and put a big old socket. If you can't get a big cheater on there, that's what we did. You know, we would switch between these two and use this as a cheater. And when we could, we would slide that pipe in and use it as a cheater. But this, these, not, these bolts are pretty tough. you got to put some muscle into them. Once you get that bracket, or the caliper with the bracket off, throw it on top, try to bungee cord it better than I did yesterday. Mine sort of slid off, but I had to redo it. Anyways, nevertheless, didn't break anything or rip anything. Uh, at that point, you want to slide your uh, rotor off. Luckily, mine wasn't bad, so I left it. Uh, shortly, it's going to get new brake pads on both sides. We just need to get them down the road and have them safely and legally going down the road. So we did so. So... Got the rotor out of the way and then turn a hard left. You know, did a couple of bolts. I want to say they're 60 millimeter. My buddy was helping me and he was the one that was doing the, the backside of the things. Now, I, I want to say they're 60 millimeters. I'm pretty darn sure it's 60 millimeter. I have a toolbox, like a 20, 220 piece craftsman tool set in there. I just don't want to dig it up. Um, so you're going to need a 60 millimeter socket to reach in there and get it to town. We use the 3 8s. We have a craft, mine's a craftsman set. So if it breaks, so be it. We had a half inch setup as well. So, uh, survived. Craftsman did as well. And so, you know, hard left got the back bolts and then hard right got the front two bolts. Some bolts got busted with this and other bolts got busted with that cheater bar. Um, you know, and my bearing went in seven months ago. I don't know why it failed. This is the higher end SKF. I'm not going to talk smack about them. You know, stuff happens. First time it, uh, a bearing didn't last very long. You know, I, I don't know. Probably have like 70, 80,000 miles on it. It's, it's, it's a lot of miles, but for me, you know, these bearings do 300,000 usual. That's ready or not, you know, they come out at 300 as preventative. 
they don't last much longer than that anyways, but 300,000, they come out as preventative. But this is the first time a bearing went out. This bearing got put in uh, January of this year, and it's July now, so seven months, it's a Dunners. But anyways, that's a side note. I'm not bashing on, this is the better brand, Napa. I, I buy a lot of parts from Napa. Uh, Napa has a much cheaper bearing. Stay away from that junk. Not Napa junk, but I'm just saying, like, when it comes to bearings, don't cheap out the cost you. Even at a higher end uh, scale like I did, it still went out on me. So we'll, we'll have the warrant to take care of that one. But anyway, so that'll get the bearing out. And uh, if you don't know how to reverse process, you probably shouldn't be looking into doing this yourself. But it's just a reverse process from there on. So to recap, 22 millimeter, you know, parts you need, or tools you need. 22 millimeter to get the wheel off, 33 millimeter to get the nut on the axle off, 24 millimeter to get the bracket on the brake caliper off, um, you know, a little bit of tapping and get the rotor off, ours came off right away, but some of them are seized, so you gotta tap them a little bit, need be, a little bit of this good old Schaefer's spin trip. And then on the back side, you got 60 millimeter. So yeah, that's all it is. Um, um, we use the, we use the 60 millimeter uh, to, for convenient purposes but to really crank on it we use the socket on the back side so there you have it yeah, that's as much tools you're going to need keep in mind have a fresh set of shoes a new rotor i have in the truck um and a pliers and a flat head screwdriver is going to do the trick for you really pretty simple straightforward just you know it's it's all about missing that socket or something so hopefully someone will thank me for this video i know it's not gonna be a very popular video but as always may Allah bless you May all have a mighty fine day. And don't forget to take one of these. Uh, easy OBD2 reader will uh, need to be cleared to clear all your stuff out. So your ABS, your brake, and uh, your traction control. Check engine light needs to be shut off so you can have safe travels and your cruise works. All right. May the Lord bless you. May all have a mighty fine day. Ciao, bye.